All right, welcome, Mr. Mike Kemp. Hello. Firstly, I'd like to apologize for that fucking dreadful fucking pop punk shit that was playing. That was not my choice of intro music. It should have been fucking House of Pain or something vaguely decent. So I apologize. You all had to suffer through that shit, but I was suffering more. Um, before I begin, I'd like to make a couple of swift observations. Firstly, I'm very sleep deprived at the moment, so I'm kind of tripping balls, which means that for most of this talk, I'm going to be incoherent. I largely blame you people because you gave me fucking alcohol and you didn't give me enough fucking sleep. So the fact that this will suck is on you. Can I also point out this, sorry, leaving now, this shit, wrong. This class distinction shit is bollocks. All you people that sat there that need a plug point, sit here. Fuck these VIP people. Third observation, this shit is too big as a stage. I need a smaller stage. And if I was more awake, I'd be running backwards and forwards pretending to be fucking David LaRoff or some shit. As it is, I'm that old and fucked up, I'll damage myself, so fuck that. So, who the fuck am I and why should you bother listening to me? Well, I'm sleep deprived, so you know, anything could come out at this point. Um, but I run a company in the UK, Stroke US. Birmingham in the UK, which is shit, and New York in the US, which smells of piss. So, you know, funny, hey? Fecal filiacs. Um, and yeah, we're called Zyphos Research Labs, and we break shit. Uh, as you may have figured by the funny accent, I'm from the UK. Weird. Um, I'm not just, you know, some Anglophile that's trying to get down with Doctor Who and shit. I actually am a real Brit. Um, and on that point, can I just point out, there is some arsehole at this conference that was in Gavin's talk that basically referred to me as the third Scotsman. Whoever you are, I will track you down and I will fucking fuck you up. Because that shit is not acceptable. Um, I was also here last year, and basically what this proves to me is it's true. Americans do not learn from fucking history. I was terrible last year, and I'm here again. You bitches learn nothing. Um, I'm really interested in overlooked attacks. I like weird shit. I like X25. I'm old. It's old. We get on well. And one thing that really pisses me off is everybody in this fucking room. The entire industry is broken. We are doing it all fucking wrong. And I will explain why. So, oh, too fast. Old stuff, <laughs> awesome. I have proof. This is Betty Page. Betty Page was a 1950s glamour model that regularly got her baps out and appeared in bondage as well as um, softcore stuff like this. Now I appreciate showing a woman on stage in a glamorous pose is a creeper move now. I apparently am a pervert because I like tits. So to anybody who has breasts and is, appall and is appalled by my liking of them, I'm very sorry, but I'm going to continue to like them. Sorry. So, every researcher loves new technology. Why? Because every researcher to a man or woman is a fucking whore. If you find O'Day in the latest shiny thing, you get press. You know, AP ring you up and ask for comment and shit. You get famous because, you know, you've just got root on an Android. Well done. You managed to bust up a commercial domestic de device. Brilliant. Problem with that is old shit still runs the world. You know, that's why politicians and stuff are really fucking old. Now, like politicians, old shit is really difficult to deal with. You know, you can't really develop on it because it's old and it's cranky and it doesn't like being fucked with. You can't test it properly because no fucker knows how because everybody that did has died. And you can't secure it because, you know, everybody who could secure it is dead. You know, old shit dies old, um, in terms of people but doesn't in terms of tech. Now, why is there a picture of a Cessna? Is it because I'm actually into aeronautics and shit? Is this going to be Chris Roberts talk Mark II? No, because Chris knows shit and I know nothing. So, you know, there's a minor differential there. But the reason why there's a Cessna there is an ex-colleague of mine was trying to source some mainframe parts. So he got on an IBM mailing list of lots of IBM people with huge beards and sandals and shit and asked for free shit and went to an airfield and a Cessna pulled in. At this point, my friend is freaking out thinking it's a drug deal gone wrong. Uh, but this old guy who can barely walk gets out of the Cessna, comes over, gives him the machine parts. And my mate's like, how the fuck have you got a plane? Are you like a drug smuggler and shit? 
He's like, no, what I do is I basically swap out memory on AS400s. I bring the AS400s down, I swap out the memory, I bring them back to life again. He's like, that's cool, that really pays for a plane. It's like, yeah, that's what, about 650 bucks an hour? And it's like, shit, okay, so you have a plane. It's like, no, I've got two. This is the one I use during the fucking week. <laughs> so, another picture from the 70s. You can tell it's from the 70s because, you know, they're using, like, a typewriter and shit. Remember those? Now, why is that there? Well, that's a PDP-11. Why is there a picture of a 1970s PDP-11 in a talk in 2012? Well, because the same friend used to, before he did security, swap out wiring. He used to turn twin acts into a Ethernet. He was walking around a power station one day, doing his job, getting paid, trying to recover from a hangover, probably. Wandered into a small dark room. There's a PDP-11 plugged into the LAN. Went to the network manager and said, excuse me, you are aware you've got a fucking PDP-11 connected to your LAN? Network manager's like, yeah. It's like, why do you have a PDP-11 plugged into your LAN? Um, well, we don't know. We don't know quite what it does. It's been here since we were opened, and if we turn it off, shit might go bad. So, can you make, it, make sure shit don't go bad? That's at a fucking power station. These people make, like, power. And they're using shit from 1972. So, another quick story, and I'll be quick. This is a client gig we did about two months ago. I'm not going to tell you who they are, but, you know, they did suck ball. Um, basically, they had a couple of domain servers. They had a um, fl relatively flat network apart from their main file server, which had all their data on it, which was in a separate DMZ. We rocked up, and within 15 minutes, we had their domain controller. Cold. Owned. How? 0867. Um, we also owned lots of their SAP box boxes, because SAP put them in. And what SAP did was say, OK, these are SAP boxes. What we'll do is we'll leave the default accounts on so we can come back and we work with them again. All their user boxes, well, I say all, until we got bored. We owned about 60, and then we got fucked off with it. But all of their user boxes were on because of deprecation. We got into their main file server, which had all their shit on it, including unencrypted card data. Well done, boys. Was owned because a development manager had access to it and, you know, had MSO 3027. So fucking a practically decade-old issue on a fucking production environment with access to their main file server. Now, in the real world, beyond let's get Windows 8 and put it on our tablets and then have a group hug, in the real world, where people don't have that much money, they still run XP, which is shit. They still run 2003, which is shit. And they still run 2000, which is fucking hilarious. <laughs> now, even without discussing obscure legacy shit, legacy stuff is full of win. I mean, a domain controller, their primary account, you know, 4,000 user hashes, in like 15 minutes. That's shocking and yet hilarious, and we did do a little dance. Now, what am I actually going to be talking about? I'm going to be talking about AS400s, because they're, you know, funny. I'm going to be talking about VAX and VMS, because, again, that's funny. I'm going to be talking about PLCs, or more specifically, why Mossad don't freak me out, because, you know, I'm not an Arab. I'm going to be talking about remote file includes. I'm going to be talking about X25s. And I'm going to be talking about why it's impossible to talk about all that shit in an hour without sounding vaguely like you're on coke, which I'm not. In fact, I don't even have a fucking beer, which is outrageous, but you know. So, a couple of quotes. History repeats itself, first as tragedy, second as farce. Who said that? Karl Marx. You all know Karl Marx, and you all love him. Secretly, you all want to be him and have a massive beard. And, you know, leads to the end of capitalism. That would be awesome. Second quote, and this guy's awesome. A guy called Phil Edwards in 2000 was writing for the System I network, which was like IBM group hug shit, and said that the menace of hackers is often overstated. So, all you people suck, according to Phil Edwards, who I've not heard from since. So maybe the menace wasn't overstated, and maybe you just got pwned to shit. But anyway, I first started looking at AS400s, and I noticed a couple of things. Last published vulnerability was in 08 which was the official end of life. That was when the i-series basically died and became system P, because, you know, it's IBM and they do things alphabetically, apart from their name, which obviously isn't. Now, allegedly, I was told, nobody uses AS400s. They're not in use, they're too old, we don't like them. Allegedly. Because, you know, I asked Twitter, and Twitter, as I'm sure you're aware, is a reliable source of data at all times. 
people tell the truth consistently and accurately. So, again, I asked Twitter and you know, I said, has anybody seen an AS400 in prod? They're like, no, nope, we've seen them in the trash, which is bollocks, because if I saw an AS400 in the trash, it would be coming home with me, because they're quite expensive. I've seen, uh, according to people, they've seen them in server rooms saying, um, you know, um, under signs saying, here be dragons. Apparently, never, ever, ever in production. Now, as usual, I have an issue with that, and I will call bullshit. So everybody on Twitter that lied to me, you're all lying bastards. I have proof, because I've seen them on client sites handling payroll. I've seen them handling a lot of fulfillment and warehousing. I've seen them storing CC details, which if you know anything about how AS400s handle encryption, is insane. I've seen them regulating industrial controls, like power stations and shit. I've also seen them being left the fuck alone because nobody knows what they fucking do. <laughs> I've yet to see them under a sign saying, here be dragons, but at some point I fucking will. And that point at least will be accurate. Now, if you use Shodan, which you should, always use Shodan, it's funny, it makes giving talks that much easier. I've found AS400s that are public facing, that belong to Quest, that belong to Ford, that belong to Bell South. Most of Telecom Italia's backbone is on AS400s, because, you know, AS400s in Italy are a bit like the Pope. They're quite big and quite well liked. I've seen them in banks. I've seen them in universities. I've even seen them in local government. Cedar Rapids has got an AS400. Grand Rapids has not. When I saw the Rapids bit, I got really fucking excited. And then I realized that Cedar Rapids isn't Grand Rapids. I had to check fucking Google Maps for this shit. So, another place that has them is Jacuzzi. Jacuzzi, if you don't know, are the people that organized the pool party at DEF CON. It's all their fault because they provided the amenities to do it in. So, you know, I've also seen them, as I say, Telecom Italia. That's me stood outside. Oh, look at this fucking superhero here. Ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Shaw. That man is a gentleman. Although I am slightly worried what he's put in the drink. <laughs> if I start tripping balls, it's that Californian's fault. Uh, so, moving on from the free beer. Yeah, that's me stood outside Telecom Italia trying to look, you know, disingenuous and shit. So, AS400s do exist. They are in the internet, they are in production. You can see them, you can touch them, you know. Um, how do they do the voodoo that they do? Well, funny story about this. In about 95, IBM tried to trademark the phrase powered by pixie dust. They were denied, but they fucking tried. Because their entire thing was, okay, our servers are fucking magical. They are powered by magical fucking elves and pixie dust. We're not telling you how else they fucking work, but there's pixie dust in them now boxes. Fucking insane. Any other vendor in the fucking world, how does your shit work? Well, pixie dust, isn't it? <laughs> the fuck? Now, a guy called Tom Van Loy did an awesome talk on AS400s at Hacking at Random in 2009. Hacking at Random, if you don't know it, is an event that happens every four years where all the European hackers get together, sit in a field, smoke dope, and try and, you know, not look interesting to law enforcement for three days. Um, it was an awesome talk because I had a lot of technical detail. It's also an awesome talk because it's delivered by a Dutch guy. And Dutch guys talking about technology is fucking funny. The S400, <laughs> it's like, that's fucking genius. You win. Now, the reason why I got into AS400s is because IBM are believers in closed source. They love closed source. They don't like sharing their secret fucking recipe with nobody. Now, there's an OS called System I that lies at the dark heart of AS400s, and it's really, really fucking weird. Now, what, do, what System I does is a virtual machine interface, yeah? And basically, um, if you disregard the fact that it's all virtual, which is fucking weird, it loves object-orientated design. Now, it's, the entire OS supports objects down at the machine level. They are all addressable, they all have independent message queues, and they all talk to each other like separate objects, which is fucking mental. Now, what that leads to, what that leads me to believe is that AS400s are effectively big fucking databases. They're not a real computer, they're a fucking database. It's all object oriented. Now, another weird thing is that IBM don't measure CPU speed like you and I measure CPU speed. They base it on how many jobs a system can perform, which is, again, pretty fucking weird. 
Another thing on ace 400 all the installed programs, as far as I'm aware, have to be licensed and approved by IBM. So they don't talk about their shit. They won't let you develop on their shit unless you actually say, we've developed on your shit. Can we have a permission to sell it, please, Mr. IBM? Which is mental. Now, another weird thing is this thing called the single level store. Single level store is fucking mental. Basically, what you've got is one 64-bit address space that shares all the data storage. All the programs, all the data, all the things are in single level store. Now, there's no address reuse, which is fucking weird because there's no, yeah, and there's only, a, a, the memory space in there is only addressable from a single permanent address, and it's virtual. If you're a programmer, you cannot access real memory on an S400. You have to talk to it virtually. It's like, you know, going up to somebody and going, hello, and then running off, you know? Now, if you've got all your shit in one place, and programmers can't access all your shit because they can't access real memory, what the fuck could possibly go wrong? Especially on a closed source system. It'll be fine as long as you trust IBM and continue to give Big Blue your money. Now, another thing that System I does is it operates via a VM. Now, even in the hypervisor, you don't have real access to memory. Um, system I's got users, it's got roles, it's got data. All of that system level, level objects. As I say, it loves fucking objects, it digs them. Now, it remains a fucking massive database, not an operating system. Now, all that's very, very interesting, Mike, and thank you for filling up 10 minutes of, you know, meaningless techno waffle, but can we actually hack it? Can it actually be popped? Well, yeah, it can, because, you know, system I, and indeed AS400, is really fucking noisy by default, like shitloads of common ports. Those are some. You know, Shalom Carmel, who was basically the go-to guy on AS400 Secure in 2006, before, you know, he was abducted by Mossad and shit, basically wrote a book on this shit, and it's all in there, but they are so fucking noisy. It's insane. I mean, this is a classic example of their noise, yeah? This is just a straight connection via fucking FTP, you know, to a box that was ours. Honest, no, really it was. And that's an AS400. How do you know it's an AS400? Well, because AS400 is a noisy fuckers. And how you know is because it says 220 QTCP. This is how AS400 work. If it starts with a Q, it's an AS400. Because everything in an AS400 starts with fucking Q. User accounts, services, everything. IBM basically have a hard-on for the letter Q, <laughs> which is weird. Now, QTCP is there by default, largely. Now, according to Shalom Carmel, who's an Israeli guy that spoke a lot about AS400, as I say, before he got black bagged somewhere, um, don't stay awake at night because the system reveals its OS to non-authenticated users. Are you fucking mental? If I can dis discover what your system is just by connecting to a port, that's kind of gay. It's especially kind of gay and vaguely retarded if I can brute force the auth and then run quote syst and then find all sorts of juicy details about the shit that you left on by default, you retards. Another thing you've got is POP3. POP3, TCP 110, fascinating on AS400s. It's not there very often, but when you find it, it's funny fucking shit. Why is it shit or funny fucking shit? Because depending on the implementation, and you know, it's on most implementations, you get very, very useful error messages, which basically tell you what accounts exist and not. So what you do is you get things like 2.2.e3 that says the user profile is disabled, piss off. You get 2.2.e5, which says there's no password associated, which means the account isn't fucking there. You know, you get 2204, user profile not found, again, piss off. But you also get 2285 and 2282, which are really fucking useful, because then you can maybe start having a pop at them. As I say, you don't find pop free that often, but when you do, fucking hilarious. Thank you for telling me what users you have. Thank you. What could possibly go fucking wrong? Well, what could go fucking wrong is that AS400 ship with a fucking ton of default users. I mean, they're not quite as bad as Oracle 9i, but they're pretty fucking close. They've got, like, lots of them. And again, because it's IBM, they all start with the letter Q, because we like Q. I don't know why they chose Q. I really do not fucking understand, but, you know, they did. Now, many of those accounts will be disabled. Many of them won't be remote accounts. But if they are, they may well have null passwords, and they may well have the same, the same password as the username, because IBM are retarded. So, username enumeration, 
easy. Platform discovery, easy. Now, word of warning, if you try and brute force an AS400, it will end bad. It will end very, very bad, because most people will use QMaxSign. Now, what QMaxSign does, which is great, is if you fuck up and put in the wrong off details, it'll disable the user profile. It'll drop it, which is great if you know the admin one. You know, hee hee hee, you can't access your shit no more, because I fucked you up by putting in the wrong thing five times. Fuck off. But what, they, what also can happen is you can disable the devices, e.g. the terminals that people use to look at their shit. Or even better, the devices themselves. You can kill an AS400 by guessing wrong. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, why is there a picture of a man with a beard in my talk? Well, this guy's called Ian. He, Ian joined us at Zyphos about three weeks ago. Came from RWE, very nice guy, but in terms of legacy shit, doesn't know it. In terms of Ruby, doesn't know it. Now, I'm a dick. You know, as anybody who knows me will testify to, I am actually moderately evil. I get off on being an arse. So what I did to Ian, who knows nothing about legacy and nothing about Ruby, is say, what we need is a Metasploit module. Go do. And three days later, he wrote a Metasploit module for POP3 enumeration. Why did he write that? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take every single published vulnerability and put it in Metasploit. Because I think it'll be fucking hilarious to have 30-year-old technology bundled in the core modules. This will amuse me. Now, one of the selling points of AS400s is that it's invulnerable to malware. It's like fucking Superman. It's the Superman of OSs. Yeah? Now, IBM technical documents make a big fucking deal about this. They say, according to our magical secret source, no shit will run on our, shit, on, on, on our boxes. You know? If you have an AS400, it will stay permanently clean. Incidentally, this IBM technical document is the dullest fucking thing I have ever had to read. It's badly written, badly constructed, and quite frankly, I dozed off halfway fucking through. Now, one thing that they do say is although the OS system I is invulnerable, IFS, the integrated file storage, e.g. where all the shit is stored, isn't. You know, so another interesting thing in that doc is they basically say there is no AV for AS400s. So there's no AV, so how do you know you haven't got viruses? Just a fucking thought. Now, what you could do is, as I say, you could use the IFS to store malware on, to shunt it around the network. You could stick it on via POP3, you can stick it on via Domino, you can stick it on via NetServe, you can stick it on via fucking FTP, you can stick it on via USB, I don't care how you fucking do it, get it on there. Why? Because AS400s never go off. People don't understand them, so they don't turn them off. And it has no AV, so it won't know it's got a virus on it. So if you were to use IFS as a malware distribution network on a network, you could own the fuck out of that network because people are too scared to turn their AS400s off because they don't like paying people 650 bucks a fucking hour. Now, why are there no viruses for AS400s? Is it magic? No. It's possibly because IBM are incredibly fucking close-lipped about the internal memory stacks and how shit works. Now, quick aside, I got um, interested in AS400s and as I say, I went on Twitter and said, I can't afford an AS400 because, you know, I like buying beer and shit. Can somebody give me one? So I met a guy in a pub who was a very, very scary gentleman who was very beefy and very, like, close-shaved on, on his head. And I was like, okay, this guy's either a fascist or ex-military or possibly fucking both. And on the next table, there was another couple of beefy fucking guys with shaved heads drinking Coke, which never fucking happens in a UK bar, ever. And, you know, it came out eventually. He's from Kinetic. Kinetic, if you don't know them, basically are very close allies with the UK military and UK intelligence gathering community and basically make very interesting shit that goes boom or maybe pop on a network. Now, they gave me an AS400 for free, just after I talked about North Korea. That's not us. And, best thing about it, they said, well, we may have left some data on there, but if we have, don't tell anyone. Now... That smells like a fucking setup. I'm going to jail because of your fucking box, aren't I? <laughs> Nicely, however, I've managed to avoid jail because the fucking thing only connects via Twinax or Token Ring. 
I don't have token ring because it's not 1990 fucking two, and I definitely don't have a Twinax terminal because that shit costs more than gold or golden unicorn shit. So I need a Twinax terminal. Somebody here needs, must have one in a shed rotting. Give me it. I will take it home and then I will be arrested for fucking with Kinetic. Now my plan is find a Twinax terminal. Then I'm going to add some Ethernet connectivity so I can actually use the fucking box. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to assist, uh, intercept all the, all, all the system level calls from the kernel to Timmy and back and forwards. Then I'm going to document them because IBM never had. Then I'm going to publish it because, you know, fuck IBM and their fucking secret sauce. And then I'm going to buy a fucking unicorn. <laughs> Coming back to the malware thing, uh, you know, the AS400s do not have viruses. They are indestructible like fucking Superman and have a cape and everything. Shalom Carmel's published details of, you know, all sorts of shit. Privilege escalation, um, hijacking user sessions, overwriting jobs, starting jobs, dropping jobs, generally fucking about. That sure as shit sounds like malware to me, you know? It's got data exfiltration, uh, data exfiltration and deletion. That's fucking malware. Now, he's also published details about how to use Rort. Rort's fucking really weird. It's like the Java version of fucking remote desktop. It's fucking mental. We tried to get hold of a copy of it, but it's that fucking old you can't. Because our plan was set up a rot session. Anybody that connects in will automatically you know, be playing with our rot session, which may or may not be legitimate. So what we're going to do, because we can't get rot, is just fuck about with Netcat. But again, I need a fucking Twinax terminal first. So there's lots of interesting stuff in terms of architecture on System I, but nobody's fucking looking at it. It's not an Android phone, so people are just like, fuck that shit, it don't exist, it's under sign saying, here be dragons. Now, researching AS400s is not easy, you need to access one. This is why I'm thinking, fuck it, I'm going death row cluster on this bitch. Somebody give me a Twinax terminal, I'll put this on a public face and IP and then you can play. Now, I'm not going to cover off everything about AS400s because this talk's not exclusively about AS400s. But if you have a Twinax terminal, give me one, I am begging here and I will open this shit up to everybody and then you can all have a play at fucking off IBM. Now, PLCs. PLCs are great. They run big shit. This guy is running a PLC. He may be playing fucking Missile Command. He may even be playing Elite. I'm not sure what he's fucking doing, but that doesn't look like work. So, PLCs. Programmable logic controllers. They're like normal computers, only they're better. They're hardened. Um, in terms of environmental shit, so no dust, no water, no electricity, you know, they're, they're fairly hard systems, because they have to be, because, you know, they run shit. Um, they're used in Scarda land, so they're in oil refineries, they're in gas works, you know, which are dangerous, noisy, horrible, sweaty places, and they're also used in uranium enrichment plants, like in Iran and shit. Now, when people talk about hacking Scarda, and they do it all the fucking time, another talk about how I fuck Scarda, great, well done, you. What they're actually talking about is pissing around with PLCs and the supporting software environments. Now, interesting thing about PLCs, shitloads of flavors of them, but they all do the same thing. They're exactly like fucking chicken wings, in as much that they do the same job, but, you know, slightly different tastes. Now, PLCs, are they just like a normal computer? No, they are not like a normal computer, you retard, they cost a lot more money. The reason why they cost a lot more money is because programs are stored in non-volatile memory. So basically, output is real-time limited based upon what you put in. Yeah? Now, you can make um, input via programming terminals back in the day, or you can do it over Ethernet, or you can do it via reprogramming a chip if you want to get really old school on it. Now, because of what PLCs control, they make really high-value targets and wonderful, wonderful news stories. You know, Stuxnet is a fucking classic example of this. A quick reminder to anybody in the room that's not heard of Stuxnet, and if you haven't, you really shouldn't fucking be here, but let's just assume that somebody in here works in, you know, the accounting department or something. What was Stuxnet? Well, Stuxnet was a worm that was made by magical elves of questionable nationality, <laughs> is what Stuxnet was. Some have blamed the Israelis. Some have blamed the Americans. I personally blame Santa. What Santa did was he said, Iran are very, very naughty. And we have a bit of downtime because it's only February, so crack on, make some malware, it'll be fucking hilarious. And that'll teach Akmajinajad for being a naughty boy this year. The fucking elves did it. Now, what did the elves do? They targeted Windows PCs with Ode. Woohoo, scary. 
they targeted Siemens PCS and WinCC, which basically is the shit that is used to program PLCs, which they had a rootkit in it. It was fucking funny. Now, they also attacked the PLCs themselves. Nobody's ever said which ones, because the full source isn't out, or I can't get it anyway if it is. Now, what PLCs did they attack? Who knows? Probably Siemens ones, I'm guessing. And it really upset the Iranians, so Santa was right. Now, the great thing about uh, Stuxnet is you could spread it via USB, which is fucking great. If you think about it, this basically means some little elf flew in from the North Pole and scattered fucking USBs around an, er an enrichment plan. Like a fucking red teeming elf. Here, have some presents of malware, children. And then disappeared. What Stuxnet also did is it used default creds, which is fucking terrifying. However, did they get the default credentials for Siemens devices? Well, at the time, that was huge news. The actual creds they used had been known for fucking years. They were published. Yeah? Now, there are lots of other vendors other than fucking Siemens, although Siemens don't think there are, because Siemens are German and therefore a little bit arrogant. Now, what I wanted to do is I wanted defaults. Because Stuxnet had defaults, so I wanted them. So I got lots of them. I got all the ones for Alan Bradley, I got Modicon, I got Neobor, I got lots and lots of Siemens shit, not just free. Fuck you, Stuxnet. <laughs> and yeah, how did I get them? Because I went onto Siemens forums, and what happens on Siemens forums, and this is fucking hilarious, is somebody will say, I cannot access my PLC because I have forgotten my password because I am a retard. And then some greybeard will say, well, we shouldn't be talking about this in an open public forum because that would be bad if people got this information, wouldn't it? And then another greybeard will say, ah, fuck it, I'm bored. Yeah, type that, it'd be funny. <laughs> Why did I do this? Why the fuck not? Siemens, the Stuxnet had three Siemens defaults. I've got 40 of them. Where's my fucking press? <laughs> so, how do you find PLCs? Use Nmap. Rockwell's, you know, Siemens S7s, they all use ports. You can find out what they are. They're written in documentation and everything. All you have to do is read, which I know is an abstract concept for Americans, but that's when you actually look at shit on paper. Oh, I'm losing the crowd. Bail, bail, <laughs> retreats. <laughs> now, what can you actually fucking find if you were to use Nmap? Well, you can use Nmap or you can use Shodan. I'm mean, using Shodan, you can find all sorts of shit. You can find IP bridges. Why would they be on the internet? Who the fuck knows? You can also find some other interesting shit. You know, you can find Verizon Ethernet boxes. You can find fucking human-machine interfaces that, you know, control shit, because your human-machine interface sits on top of the PLC. You can also find the industrial controls for a fucking building. Let's turn off the air conditioning in Japan. That'll be funny, especially if we do it in July. Tee hee. <laughs> There's loads of shit you can find. I mean, the best thing I found was this. This is a water treatment plant in Canada. That's on the fucking internet. Now, if you hate Avril Lavigne, if you think that some 41 are shit, if you have real fucking emotional issues with Brian Adams, you can chlorinate these fuckers. <laughs> Quick pro tip, kids. Keep your fucking PLCs off the internet. Because otherwise, I will get fucking revenge for Avril Lavigne. It will fucking happen. At some point, I will fucking snap, and then you fuckers are drinking nothing but fluoride. <laughs> now, Stuxnet was fucking awesome. Dylan's, Dylan Beresford's talk at Black Hat 2011, even fucking better, did some very, very pretty fucking Metasploit modules for Siemens. It's really cool. If you're remotely into PLCs, if you, if you too want to research SCADA, go read this fucking talk. It's awesome. Now. He missed something, as did the makers of Stuxnet. The um, Siemens themselves have a program called Wipeout. Now, what Wipeout does is it basically drops the memory on an S7200, just clears the PLC. You can do the same thing by connecting to a Siemens S7200 and issuing as a username, clear PLC. That drops the fucking entire memory. Now, that works on S7200, which is like the baby, let's learn how to program PLCs versions. But I fucking bet it might work elsewhere. I don't know. I've not got a PLC to play with. If you have, get a copy of Wipeout, reverse engineer the fucker, find out if it works. Because I reckon it fucking might, you know. Now, 
That, by the way, is an acoustic coupler. If you don't know what that is, there's the fucking door. Yeah. Let's talk about X25. Before there was the internet, there was X25. Now, some of you here may be old enough to remember it. And to you old bastards, I apologize. To anybody here that's used to you know, TCP IP, they need to know what X25 is, because it's awesome. First commercial global net data network, still used a lot. I mean a lot. It's owned by telecoms, and telecoms don't like fucking giving their shit up. So it's used a lot. Um, as it's built into old stacks, it's built into VMS, it's built into AS400, it's built into lots of shit by default. Now, how it works? Well, if you get a lease line, which is X25 ready, you get a network user address, and that's always associated with your lease line. What you do is you call that lease line, and you pay for the cost of the traffic, not the connection sign. It's a bit like a telephone call with computers and shit. You know? Now, as I say, making, making phone calls with a computer, bit of an alien concept here, but back in the day we had this thing called dial-up, and it was awesome because it made funny little tones, and, gr and it was great. And you actually felt like a hacker because you could use a telephone and a computer at the same time. Now, there's many X25 assigned networks that are assigned globally. Now, there's a couple of awesome, awesome things about X25. X25 addresses are reserved. And because they're reserved, and changing them is a pain in the ass because people have to deal with the International Telecoms Union, they very rarely change. Awesome fact number two. If you've got the data network ID code for a lease line and the newer, which is typically no longer than about 15 digits, you can access that X25 lease line. Now, awesome fact number three, DNICs, which is e.g. the country codes, are published and maintained by the ITU. And newers, because they're numbers, you can wall dial these fuckers. Nobody does anymore, but you can. Now, why does this matter? Well, there's a lot of public data out there that's published and is accessible and can be read and it doesn't change. And, but why it matters is for a couple of reasons. Iran has X25. Most of their internet backbone is X25. They've never made the leap over properly to CCP IP. You know, they ru you run Iran pack and they run it well because, you know, they censor everybody who disagrees with them and stop access to Gmail and lovely things like that. Uh, d everything that is on Iran pack is licensed by DCI, or the Data Communications Company of Iran. Who are DCI? Well, they're the Iranian government in drag. You know, they're the only people that can sell leased lines to the government because they fucking are the government and shit. And this, because it's very centralized and very controlled, makes Ahmadinejad very happy, regardless of what Santa does to him. Yeah. Newers, as I say, can be war dialed. Yeah. And Iran has been. You know, here's the topology of how Iran Pact works, which I stole gleefully from a guy called Raul Kiesa, who is basically one of the few people around that still understands X25 properly. So I ripped him off, because that's what I do. Um, another thing that I found in my travels was this. Um, this is on a blog which was read by about four people, belonging to a Swedish researcher called S. Ham Hamid Kashfi, who's an ex-Iranian dude living in Sweden. Now, what is that? Well, it's a listing of all the network user addresses in Iran. So, if you have the DNIC, and if you have the newer, you never remember what I said earlier, you can access all the X25 leased lines in Iran, in a closed country that just banned Gmail. This makes Ahmadinejad very sad. <laughs> but why would Ahmadinejad be sad, other than Santa fucking with him? Well, there's some really interesting shit in this document. You've got the Bureau of Standards, who sound like a great bunch of party people. They sound like fun. And if you piss off the Bureau of Standards, you get involved in the Bureau of Prisons. There's also an entity called Yank Exports, who I don't know what they do, but I really fucking want to know what they do. <laughs> Another couple of entities which are more fucking worrying, however, is Ansar al mujahideen Now, for those of you who don't know who Ansar al mujahideen are, they're basically like the PR wing of Al-Qaeda. Whenever there's a jihadi incident, they're all like, yay, we blew something up, praise Allah. It's basically a closed forum, which is used for recruitment, is used for propaganda, and it's used for organizing, blowing shit up. But they have an X-25 leased line in Iran. So basically, a country that has publicly come out and said, we do not support and we do not endorse terrorism, 
have a fucking leased line that belong to terrorists. How is that not supporting terrorism if that's licensed by the fucking government? Now, obviously, that document could be bullshit. It could be a Mossad black op. But it's four years old. You know, I found four-year-old research. Woo, look at me, I'm clever. Now, if it was a black op, then maybe fucking Fox News would have picked up on Iran sponsoring terrorism back in 2008. They didn't, which kind of proves that it might actually be genuine. Now, are you not entertained? Because Ahmadinejad is not. Ahmadinejad is grumpy. This is why I have to point out, not mine, Swedish guy. <laughs> when you declare fatwa, point it that way. Not this way, not me. Make that clear for you, Ahmadinejad, because you have sexy facial hair. Now, how do you play with X25? I mean, why would you, but well, how, well, how do you? Well, the easiest way is a lease line. The legal way is, you know, to get an X X28 pad, which are very rare to source now. Or maybe run X25 over TCP, which is what the Iranians are trying to do, using XR, which I won't explain because it's fucking complicated. There's an legal way. You can get, a, get access to a PBX, use that to call an X28 pad. They pay for the data, not you, tee hee. Um, the really easy way, ask your local hacker or freak or old school hacker off rig. I would, I would suggest you ask Kevin, but he fucked off home after three hours like the big fucking whore that he is. <laughs> and yes, Kevin, I did fucking say that. You're a whore. Now, X25 is weird. Yeah, you can find targets by scanning for them. Every fucking thing is reserved. It doesn't change. Your concept of exploitation, e.g. buffer overflows and shit, doesn't work. You don't need to know that shit anymore. Forget that shit. The complicated stuff with strings and no, 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 that's bullshit. This is why I like X25. You don't need to know shit. Basically, because it's a different stack, because it doesn't work on IPv4 and doesn't work on IPv6, you cannot protect an X25 lease line. It is raw on the fucking internet. Your IDS, no worky. Your firewall, no worky. Your IPS, no worky. Different fucking tech stack. Which basically means if you find a fucking login prompt, you can brute force that fucker all night long and no fucker knows. That's my kind of shit. I don't need to know nothing. Fuck knowing about memory allocation, all I have to do is keep pressing return. And it's really attractive target base. Now, if you want to play with financial transactions, use X25. If you want to read SMS uh, messages, use X25. The backbone of Orange is X25. The backbone of Vodafone is X25. I think the backbone of AT&T may still be X25. I don't know, I'm an American, I'm not finding out for you. You want to control network switching for an entire country? Let's take over fucking Iran. X25. If you want to find out all sorts of data about all sorts of things, like how Iranians sponsor fucking terrorism, according to the Swedish guy, not me, X25. Use it. Play with it. No fuckers doing it anymore. You'll be like one of about four. Instead of everybody running around trying to fucking find the latest Android O day, do X25. It's an open field. Less competition. Okay, zero fucking press because nobody's interested, but more fun. Yeah. Another thing that I'd said I'd cover off is war dialing. At the moment, what we're doing is we're reading, using Ward, which is developed by Raptor, who's like a really cool Italian dude who knows a fucking butt ton about X25. I'm a war dialing in the 0800 range in the UK. Very old, been done before, hasn't been done for the last fucking seven years. That's why we're doing it. Why am I doing it? Because in the last seven years, we've got network, de network connected devices that do multiple things, like printers and faxes and modems and shit. And that shit will be on the internet. And I suspect there might be some very interesting shit on there, which I can't talk about at the moment. Um, we're going to publish it as soon as it's done. And um, we're going to do other shit as well using free VoIP, tee hee, and hopefully reignite altfreak.uk, which used to be where all the UK freakers hung around until they all got married, or put in jail, or bought a house, or became mature adults, which is why all you get on there now is Vi Viagra ads. So, I'd like to talk a bit about VMS. VMS is fascinating and old. These are old deck vaxes. You can tell they're old because they take up an entire fucking room. Now, quick thing about VMS. Fuck it, I ain't talking about it. My talk is too short. You want to know about VMS? Talk to Kevin. Kevin knows everything about VMS. He wrote a fucking book. If you read his latest biopic, or whatever it is, the entire, there's entire chapters about, and then I fucked with VMS and it was great. 
or actually what he did was rip off a UK researcher called Neil Clift and, you know, use all his unpublished research to own VMS. Now, you know, I have to call him on that because you had a legitimate security professional being ripped off by somebody who's now keynoting at conferences. Yeah, fuck that guy. Tra -la 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 -la. <laughs> right. Quick, one, a quick word about RFI, remote file include, and I will have to be fucking quick. Right. RFI popularized by LulzSec, popularized by a nom. That here we have news of Rupert Murdoch, who was, you know, found dead because of palladium in his backyard. Made every fucker in the UK giggle because, you know, we want him to die. Like, now. Um, why am I talking about that? Well, I talked to one of the guys that was involved in the attack before he was arrested and released without trial. Well done, Ireland. And what happened was, is they put up C99 shell and then fucked off in the wilderness. And then um, the sun noticed that they had C99 shell and said, shit, that shouldn't be there. That could be bad. And then they restored from backup. Unfortunately, said backup had C99 shell. Well done for keeping your audio trails clean, my boys. And then they got that shit put on them, which made everybody in the UK laugh. So, C99 shell, everybody knows about it. Everybody, in a, I assume, knows what RFI is. You know, you find a dodgy PHP instance, you play with the variables, you put up your own web shell. Yay, I'm a hacker. Now, I did a quick audit in the UK of C99 and R57, just to find out what was out there, because I'm a nosy bastard. And I found it in a shit ton of places, an absolute shit ton. A couple of quick stories. First place I found it was a small retailer who sold boat parts. And by boat parts, what I mean is if you wanted a new steering wheel for your yacht, which you cruised around on your lake of the tier, tiers of the poor, you went to these guys. Phoned them up and said, hi, you've got a web shell. They were like, well, we've got a man for that. It's like, okay, um, you've got a web shell. Could I speak to the man? It's like, oh no, the man doesn't speak to anyone. It's like, the man? What, I'm in a 60s fucking film. It's like, okay, could I speak to the man? Could I have some way of contacting him? He's like, this is one of those scams where you get me to download something on the computer, isn't it? It's like, no, could I speak to the man? It's like, oh, we don't get out his telephone number or his email address. He can use our contact form. It's like, yeah, minor problem with that, love, is the C99 shell is actually on your fucking contact form. So I maybe just tell the man, eh? Another story, and this one's fucking funnier. PCI approved and compliant merchant in the UK. They sell a lot of clothing. I'm not saying who they are. They sell hats and shoes and coats and capes and all sorts of clothing shit. Yeah, and they're PCI compliant. I found C99 shell on their, on their PCI compliant site, which accepts, you know, credit cards and shit, because they don't have stores and shit. They've just got a shop on the internet. I phoned them up and said, hi, could I speak to your IT security director? And I got speaking to Janice in accounts, and we established that Janice in accounts is not the IT security director and eventually got through to said IT security director. Said, sorry mate, um, didn't do this naughtily, but you've got a web shell. He's like, okay, that's very interesting. And just explain to me, what's a web shell? The fuck? You work in an industry where basically all you do is the web. You're a security director in charge of a fucking web shop. You don't know what a web shell is? The clue is in the fucking name. Think about it, or use fucking Google, you lazy bitch. Now, the point, RFI's known. We've known about it for years. It exists in a fucking butt ton of apps. It's still being actively exploited because it's easy to fucking do, but it's still not being found in app assessments because, you know, PCI compliant merchants probably shouldn't have a fucking long existing web shell on their website. Maybe their fucking pen testers should have fucking found that shit, because I did. Now, final point is that IT security directors can often be retards. Now, <laughs> Magic Dwan represents. Now, point is, legacy kit is still used. Yeah, it's still being used in lots of places that really probably shouldn't be using it, like fucking Iran. And it still controls some really interesting shit. Levels of understanding, though, are diminishing because there's limited vendor interest, there's zero vendor support, and there's lots of people thinking, why bother? It ain't going to make me any press. Because it's fucking fun, maybe? Maybe this used to be fun, and maybe we should have fun again? Instead of all competing for the shiny fucking prize of press and publicity, so we too can be fucking keynote speakers? Now, 
I'm not a subject matter in legacy systems because I don't have a fucking brain the size of a planet. Now, call it age, call it crankiness, call it intellectual curiosity. Closed systems like AS400s piss me the fuck off. It's like, shit should be open. If you're not willing to share your toys with the other children, get the fuck out of the playground. Now, researchers, anybody who's a researcher in this room, look at this shit, publish on this shit, write new tools for this shit. You know, can we please start talking about legacy tech again in less derisory terms? You know, because it's fucking important. But how it's talked about is just as important. E.g., the SCAD is going to make the sky fall and we're all going to die. It's bullshit. That's a focused, proper research. Final point, and I'll be quick because I know you're all here for Duncan. As an industry, we are largely shit. We are useless. And I have proof of this statement. Last year, at the end of my talk, I dropped XSS on a number of people. I've come back to Michigan, so I'm doing it the fuck again. Downtown Grand Rapids, after a fucking year of a fucking hacking con in the hometown, still has cross-site scripting. As does experience Grand Rapids. As does Ride the Rapid, which is still not a fucking porn film. As does fucking damn Barla. They were told about this shit last year when they were conference sponsors. And I said, you have XSS, maybe fix your shit. And a year later, still not fix their shit. This is why as an industry, we suck. Because we don't fucking listen and we don't fucking learn. Which is why everybody thinks that Android's awesome, but legacy shit is gay. This is why I want to wish every one of those people a happy first birthday. Especially to Dambala, because if these guys have me back next year, which they might, I'll do it again. I'll keep doing it until these fuckers fix it. So, if you, if you have any questions, please direct them at, to me at the bar or outside when I'm, having, when I'm having a cigarette. If you wish to declare undying love for me, please feel free to do so. If you, however, you wish to declare fatwa, go to fucking Sweden. <laughs> so, quick thanks to everybody here for listening. Um, I'd like to again thank Akhmadinejad for the sexy facial hair. And if you want to get in touch with me, you can. I am available to hire for children's parties, bar mitzvahs, uh, pentests, and code reviews. And feel free to drop me a line any way you know how. Thank you very much. Tally bye.
Mike Kemp, Flappy Monkey, Funky Honky, Michael Kemp. He can't fucking understand you. Here, now we're talking the same language, you twat. You left your phone up here. God save the queen. So this is the international part of the, uh, of the conference. Uh, so, uh, um, uh, donde esta mi cerveza? <laughs> Seriously, dos cervezas, por favor. Right up here. Gracias. All right. Give the. So for uh, for those of you, um, I saw that there were some weirdos that thought that this was DefCon and uh, brought your kids. Um, so this is the one warning you're gonna get. <laughs> the only one. Um, now would be, you know, and I know, I know little Johnny wants an iPad, but um, go see Art Prize for an hour or you will have what can only be described as the most awkward ride home with your kid today. <laughs> so this is, this is me at my nicest. Get, get out. <laughs> All right, y'all been warned. Okay, so, um, right, this is the official Gurkhan troll. Thank you all for coming out again. Um, well, so who the fuck am I, right? I am Duncan Minutz, exchange student from Deutschland, of course. Really nothing, yeah, fuck all of you, <laughs> come on. Thank you. Did my mic, oh, okay, all right, good. <laughs> Like not again. Okay, so I am the returning Gurkhan champion. Um, I have come to defend the crown, except I've been attending a bunch of the talks and I've really liked a lot of what I've heard. There's been some great technical content this year, um, but I've already decided that I've won because the one thing that is still missing from the discourse and the dialogue and you know just the ranting and fucking crazy ass raving, which is, that's, what's the, that's this, um, is a level of accountability for our industry. We're still patting ourselves on the back, trying to solve the world's problems, um, but spending like no time looking internally as to why it is that maybe we're not solving some of those problems as fast as we could. So, um, so anyway, fuck it. I'm taking off the crown. And the reason that I'm taking off the crown is because I don't want to be the only person. I don't want to be the only voice that's out here talking shit about what's wrong with this business that we're all in. So, but that's not gonna stop me. <laughs> I just leave in the crown up there for somebody to come pick up and it's your job to come back next year or go to another con or go back to your office but make a positive change in what it is we do for an industry. All right, oh yeah, <laughs> and I have more IT certifications than you. This is true. Let me let me prove it. Okay. So I am I am certified to work at Best Buy. Yep. Still have the tie. Okay. Those of you that uh, that managed to catch my talk last year, uh, you know that uh, I, I set out to piss off one group of people and then in, like inadvertently pissed off another group of people. So. I had to go out and get certified to reboot my own fucking routers. <laughs> no, don't worry, don't worry. Like, if, if you're not offended yet, I am so not done. Okay, I am certified at clicking next. I am certified at changing passwords. I am certified at running Nessus. I am certified at working at Ernst & Young. I'm certified at working at Deloitte, too. 
and I am certified at working at the Department of Defense. Don't clap for that shit. What the fuck is wrong with you? Seriously. Okay, so, so but there's a point. Why, why am I showing off all my certifications? I want to make a point. Like, obviously, this is fun. Um, I do hold a good number of the certs I just showed you. Some of them, you know, well, you can guess. Um, and I got a whole ass load more that I didn't show off. And that's not because um, it's not because I think certs are all that hot. Um, but well, let me ask you a question, right? Because I mean, you know, that's what certs do. So multiple choice, motherfuckers. <laughs> so all these certs, what do they make me? Do they make me the most awesome? Fucking, am I am I the man? Am I the next guy you need to hire into your IT department to handle security for your company? Absolutely. <laughs> Right, so, so uh, C, C, the, the guess is C? Yeah, you're all wrong. The answer is all of the above, motherfuckers. The truth of the matter is I'm not half bad at what I do for a living. It doesn't have shit to do with the pile of plaques on my desk. Um, but I'm also not half bad at taking multiple choice exams. But I can't remember the last time I was at work and somebody said, quick, you're pwned. Do you A or do you B or do you C? Right? And I can't remember the last time, aside from this talk, that I had to fire up Photoshop. So, so there you go. So, all right, but what's, what, what the fuck is my point, right? Why, what, so let's talk about certification as an industry body. Because let's admit it, that this industry, the IT in general, completely culpable. InfoSec, maybe a little bit worse. I mean, I, so, the DOD doesn't require that you have your MCSE to work on their servers. Like they'll take, dude, they'll take a, they'll take a grunt like right out of basic. And if he says, yeah, I like computers, they'll put him in front of the, do they still run NT4? Um, they, st they put him in front of a Windows server. They don't care that he doesn't have an MCSE. But if you want to go do like, you know, cyber security for the DOD, you have to have a CISP. So, so what's the value? Right? I mean, if we're, if we're so obsessed with these things, why? What are, we, what are we really getting out of it? So they're a tool for your HR department, right? The idea is, is that this makes it possible for human resources to do hiring and recruiting around the particular skill sets that they need. Because this is hard. Security is hard. I'm not going to lie to you. Hell, I'm probably preaching to the choir. You know, right? So if I want to be a Windows guy, how much do I have to know about BGRP and HSRP? Exactly. Jack shit. Right, and that's, uh, maybe I do know some stuff, but I don't have to, right? If I'm a Unix guy, how much do I have to know about, you know, registry hives? Not a damn thing. If I work in security, I have to know all that shit, don't I? At least all the shit that my employer has. So it's hard for HR. So what about you? Well, you'd like that job. At the end of the day, you would like to move ahead, you'd like to do some new stuff, you want your career to progress. So you go get those certs in hopes of getting that job. Get a raise at your current job, get a new job, go to Washington, sit at a desk, watch logs, make six figures. Fuck, do we, seriously we do that? Damn, we do that. Okay, and then if you're the certification body, hey, fuck it, this is America, let's make a little cash. It's private enterprise, it's free market. Right? If we have the certification program that everybody wants, then everybody's going to come to us and we'll make money. It's a quality product. It's the free market, right? We are, we are adding value. It's, it's, it's all good. Well, I think we're going to spend a little time examining each of these. And I bet, I bet all the people with certifications in the room that are really good at multiple choice questions have already figured out the answer. Because there is only one right answer. So. Raise your hand if you're ITPG certified. Ah, there's a room full of you here and you don't even know it. In 2001, ISC2, which is the, certifi uh, the, uh, the certification body behind CISSP, SSCP, and uh, like four other certs, right? You can become like a, a developer, you know, software security lifecycle, backup and DR, you know, like business continuity. You can do all that stuff, go get those certs. They, ISC2 doesn't do that. A company called ITPG does it. So ITPG generates the courseware for all of the exams. So the common body of knowledge, like the whole thing. 
Everything that goes into the exams is put together by this company. They do all the pre-review courses, right? So those people that show up with the ISC2 pins at the classes, for any of you who have done that, don't even work for ISC2. They work for a company called ITPG. And they're not really supposed to tell you that. Although, I mean, let's be honest, I got this with, uh, you know, off some open sources, itpg.com. Um, that, well, ITPG is really freaking proud of this. I don't think, I don't, I didn't find it on uh, the isc2.org site though. Isn't that weird? So I don't think it's like a big secret, but they do all of the marketing too. So, right, so they market this stuff. They market it to HR departments. They market it into the industry. They did a fantastic job of marketing it to the federal government. They run all the classes that people pay for. They put all, all the books that people pay for. They run all the tests that people pay for. So what, what the fuck does ISC do? do? Like, what, what do they do? Oh, right, this nonprofit collects $23 million in revenue from ITPG each year. At least this was the last year. I think it, at one point it was as low as $6 million for, for running a, a website and mailing you pieces of paper. That is so awesome. I am in the wrong, we are all in the wrong business, aren't we? So, b b by the way, p pay attention to the titles on my slides. So, the CISSP Common Body of Knowledge currently has 10 domains to pass that exam. You're supposed to be proficient in all of those domains. And each exam is 250 questions, six hours, one sitting. Um, I know there's like, a, there's like a light version of this where like, you know, if 250 in six hours is too hard, it's like 103 hours. Um, uh, really? Um, but anyway, so that's what the test consists of and that's all it takes to get certified is to go through the process and take the exam and then you, and then you get somebody to like vouch for you and say that you, you know, and send them a copy of your resume which they don't validate um, and somebody puts a, a number on the thing and signs it like they're that person but they don't really, you know, they're just checking the name and the number validation and the, so anyway, so I'm, I'm not saying you could lie and get a CISP, but you could. All right, so I decided that, that you know, evidence-based arguments are the most effective. So here's a graph. This graph is um, a frequency breakdown. Man, that looks like butt on the screen, doesn't it? Yeah, all right. So I will walk you through this because it looks so bad. All right, so <laughs> this piece of the pie uh, right here is 50 questions of the 250, and they tell you this going in are for um, the wilderness, and then um, the sun noticed that they had C99 shells and shit, that shouldn't be there, that could be bad, and then they restored from backup. Unfortunately, said backup had C99 shell. Well done for keeping your audio trails clean, my boys. And then they got that shit put on them, which made everybody in the UK laugh. So C99 shell, everybody knows about it, everybody in a, I assume knows what RFI is, you know. You find a dodgy PHP instance, you play with variables, you put up your own web shell. Yay, I'm a hacker. Now, I did a quick audit in the UK of C99 and R57, just to find out what was out there, because I'm a nosy bastard. And I found it in a shit ton of places, an absolute shit ton. A couple of quick stories. First place I found it was a small retailer who sold boat parts. And by boat parts, what I mean is if you wanted a new steering wheel for your yacht, which you cruised around on your lake of the tier, tears of the poor, you went to these guys. Phoned them up and said, hi, you've got a web shell. They were like, well, we've got a man for that. So like, okay, um, you've got a web shell. Could I speak to the man? It's like, oh no, the man doesn't speak to anyone. So like, the man? What, I'm in a 60s fucking film. So, like, okay, could I speak to the man? Could I have some way of contacting him? He's like, this is one of those scams where you get me to download something on the computer, isn't it? It's so like, no, could I speak to the man? It's like, oh, we don't get out his telephone number or his email address. You can use our contact form. It's like, yeah, minor problem with that, love, is the C99 shell is actually on your fucking contact form. So I maybe just tell the man, eh? Another story, and this one's fucking funnier. PCI approved and compliant merchant in the UK. They sell a lot of clothing. I'm not saying who they are. They sell hats and shoes and coats and capes and all sorts of clothing shit. Yeah, and they're PCI compliant. 
I found C99 Shell on their, on their PCI compliance site, which accepts, you know, credit cards and shit, because they don't have stores and shit. They've just got a shop on the internet. I phoned them up and said, hi, could I speak to your IT security director? And I got speaking to Janice in Accounts, and we established that Janice in Accounts is not the IT security director, and eventually got through to said IT security director. Said, sorry, mate, um, didn't do this naughtily, but you've got a web shop. He's like, okay, that's very interesting. Can you just explain to me, what's a web shell? The fuck? You work in an industry where basically all you do is the web. You're a security director in charge of a fucking web shop. You don't know what a web shell is? The clue is in the fucking name. Think about it. Or use fucking Google, you lazy bitch. Now, the point, RFI's known. We've known about it for years. It exists in a fucking butt ton of apps. It's still being actively exploited because it's easy to fucking do. But it's still not being found in app assessments. Because, you know, PCI compliant merchants probably shouldn't have a fucking long existing web shell on their website. Maybe their fucking pen testers should have fucking found that shit. Because I did. Now, final point is that IT security directors can often be retards. Now, <laughs> Magic Dwan represents. Now, point is, legacy kit is still used. Yeah, it's still being used in lots of places that really probably shouldn't be using it, like fucking Iran. And it still controls some really interesting shit. Levels of understanding, though, are diminishing because there's limited vendor interest, there's zero vendor support, and there's lots of people thinking, why bother? It ain't going to make me any press. Because it's fucking fun, maybe? Maybe this used to be fun and maybe we should have fun again? Instead of all competing for the shiny fucking prize of press and publicity so we too can be fucking keynote speakers? Now... I'm not a subject matter in legacy systems because I don't have a fucking brain the size of a planet. Now, call it age, call it crankiness, call it intellectual curiosity. Closed systems like AS400s piss me the fuck off. It's like, shit should be open. If you're not willing to share your toys with the other children, get the fuck out of the playground. Now, researchers, anybody who's a researcher in this room, look at this shit, publish on this shit, write new tools for this shit. You know, could we please start talking about legacy tech again in less derisory terms, you know? Because it's fucking important. But how it's talked about is just as important. E.g. the SCADA is going to make the sky fall and we're all going to die. It's bullshit. That's a focused, proper research. Final point, and I'll be quick because I know you're all here for Duncan. As an industry, we are largely shit. We are useless. And I have proof of this statement. Last year, at the end of my talk, I dropped XSS on a number of people. I've come back to Michigan, so I'm doing it the fuck again. Downtown Grand Rapids, after a fucking year of a fucking hacking con in the hometown, still has cross-site scripting. As does Experience Grand Rapids. As does Ride the Rapid, which is still not a fucking porn film. As does fucking damn Bala. They were told about this shit last year when they were conference sponsors. And I said, you have XSS, maybe fix your shit. And a year later, still not fix their shit. This is why as an industry, we suck. Because we don't fucking listen and we don't fucking learn. Which is why everybody thinks that Android's awesome, but legacy shit is gay. This is why I want to wish every one of those people a happy first birthday. Especially to Dambala, because if these guys have me back next year, which they might, I'll do it again. I'll keep doing it until these fuckers fix it. So, if you, if you have any questions, please direct them at, to me at the bar or outside when I'm, having, when I'm having a cigarette. If you wish to declare undying love for me, please feel free to do so. If you, however, you wish to declare fatwa, go to fucking Sweden. <laughs> so, quick thanks to everybody here for listening. Um, I'd like to again thank Akhmadinejad for the sexy facial hair. And if you want to get in touch with me, you can. I am available to hire for children's parties, bar mitzvahs, uh, pen tests, and code reviews. And feel free to drop me a line any way you know how. Thank you very much. Tally bye. <laughs>